Welcome to Moments with Mary Ann. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very empowering show coming right up with special guests, Dr. Pia Orlean and Colin Smith. And they're here today to share with us not only their books, but also a channel from Larkma. Now, Pia and Colin, many of you will remember, they were on our show last month to talk about their brand new book, Palladian Earth Energy Astrology, Charting the Spirals of Consciousness, as well as their 2019 calendar, the Palladian Earth Energy Calendar, which is your guide to navigating the spiral energy patterns of the universe for conscious evolution and spiritual advancement. Today we have a very special treat. Both Pia and Colin are channeling Larkma for us. And Larkma is a loving group of Palladian beings. So let's welcome to the show Pia and Colin. Thank you. We're delighted to be here. Thank you, Marianne. We're really happy to be back with you. What a joy it is to have the both of you here. And my goodness, we've had some profound absolutely profound things have happened since the last time we talked and I can't wait to get into that a little bit later in the show we have a a special surprise you know stay tuned and listen to this but um, we're here to talk about all the books that you guys have done with Larkma and for our listeners that maybe didn't join us the first time why don't you share with us who Larkma is Larkma is a collective of beings from interstellar beings. They operate from the Pleiades. They have a Pleiadian influence, and they bring wisdom to help humans who are interested in evolution. Their general presence when you feel it is a feeling of just love. They are just full of love, and inside that love is a lot of wisdom to help humans see what we're doing wrong and give us hints and suggestions of how we can do things better without judgment. When they first introduced themselves to us, um, quite a few years ago, they said, we are one of six and six of one. And P and I had to really look at each other and go, what does that mean? And they said, we are six individuals. We have our own preferences. We have our own ways of of seeing the universe. But we work as a unit of one in unity. So they're like a family with with different members that all work together to produce an amazing amount of wisdom, as Pia said, and energetic information. When we first started having Larkma's voice come through, we got used to the rhythm and the harmony of the way the tones came through, the resonance of connecting with them. And all of a sudden, one day, one of the other members of the six decided to speak, and we we had to say, who's this? It was really interesting and fun, but now we know every time there's a shift in the energy, it's just a different one of their members taking the lead of of the group. Some of them are more masculine in in their presentation. Some are more feminine. Um, When we speak in public, um, in gatherings, Sometimes people will talk to us at a break or during lunch or the next day, and they'll say, we heard different voices. Can you explain that to us? And that's exactly what we have come to understand. Hmm. Well, it's amazing because you can feel that energy, that love, that vibration that comes through when they speak through the both of you. You know, it's that combined it, there, there's the combined energy of the two of you that make it happen. Thank you. We, it's an interesting thing for us because we are, although living our lives in love, we are completely diametrically opposite. <laughs> which <laughs> our, our, our outer, personalities couldn't get any more opposite. Our, our outer personalities are are absolutely 180 degrees from one another. And Larkma, and we're laughing about this, we love each other dearly, and we we are a, a unified couple. However, Larkma chose us because of this absolute difference in our, our outlook. It cancels out any filterization that might come through when they're giving us messages. We can have no personal preferences or attachments to anything they say because when they come through both of us, which they will not come through one or the other. They only come through both of us. 
all filterization disappears. So we're we're a little bit unique in in what we do because we have to be doing this together. We want to be doing it together, but it's it's a it's a must that they only communicate with us when we're touching and being in complete synchronicity with each other. So we're a little bit different than than many people who bring information or wisdom from other energies. I would say that you are. I mean, you both have this unique way of being able to communicate the information that LARCMA presents. And it's it's done in a way where, you know, and, and I kind of love this about them. They A lot of times they say, you know, take – take what resonates and kind of, you know, and I'm kind of paraphrasing this, but kind of take what resonates and leave the rest behind, you know. So and you really, I love that, you know. Well, that that's interesting, Marianne, because they will often say, don't believe us, believe what you trust in your own hearts. And we really like that because that means they don't want people simply following their advice or their wisdom. They want people to to grow and evolve. To think about it, feel it, and, and decide, does this resonate? Is this really something I can be involved with? So that's a really big difference, I think, in what they bring to humanity. Well, and, and you guys have been busy writing. We've got several books here to talk about today. We've covered one in the past. We're going to touch on that briefly, and we do have a very special surprise so we're going to start with the first book that you that was published, Remembering Who We Are, Larkma's Guidance on Healing the Human Condition. And, you know, I found that book to have such great wisdom in it. Um, when you were writing this book, was, there, was this done for someone specific in mind? Well, first of all, Marianne, we have to tell you that that was Larkma's second book, not their first. Okay. Their first book. Conversations with Larkma. With the original. That's the original book. That's the trilogy. original, okay. Yeah, and then remembering who we are, when they asked us to write a second book, the first one we compiled from recorded transcripts of many, many conversations that they had offered to the world. When they asked us to write for a second one, we said, uh-uh, you give us what you want us to say to the world, and then we will put it out there. And they said, okay. So they basically dictated the second one to us. Um, with the exception that they had Cullen write a chapter on the end and they had us do a joint chapter together about summarizing everything that they had said throughout the book. That chapter is called The Ten Choices, which are guidelines for living. But basically they dictated what they wanted world, the world to know for the purposes of what they call healing the human condition because our human condition is so fragmented with pain, suffering, competition, all kinds of things. Well, and I, and I want to add one thing here, too. When Pia says they dictated it, they did indeed dictate it, but in order to make it more understandable, it does require we, we, we have to rewrite and edit and edit in order to make really perfect sense about it. So they, they, they did. They don't speak linearly. They speak in spirals because that's how their consciousness Works And when you're engaged with them on a live conversation, your consciousness will follow the spirals that it makes perfect sense. But when you try to put it in linear form like a book, oftentimes we will have to, to rework the way it's presented so that it flows in a linear fashion to be read. That's it, what Cullen means by rewriting. We didn't rewrite any of the essence. No, we didn't, change the, we didn't change the content. We only changed the way it was presented, presented in, in human wording. Right. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, well, then in Conversations with Larkma, it does talk about the earth and the, you know, the energies and the planet and the, the animals here. Can you share a little bit about that for our listeners? Sure. We'd be glad to. One thing that they want us to know about this is that, and I'm going to take not only from the book, but I'm going to take from recent information they've been sharing on their live calls and public gatherings also. One thing they really want us to focus on is that everything is energy and that the highest vibratory awareness that we can have is that all energy needs to be honored. So therefore, when they talk about animals or plants or trees or anything like that, they see that with as much respect as they do a human being. It's really about honoring that each 
tree, plant, animal, person has the right to life and has something to offer in Earth. Hmm. Well, and, you know, there was a section that talked about dolphins and whales that I felt were really interesting and just the joy that dolphins bring. Yes, absolutely. Lartma has told us that dolphins carry the energy from the ancient land of Mu, and that is a continent where humans shared knowledge of how to breathe underwater, how to communicate through vibratory communication. And they say that when we engage with dolphins, dolphins help us to remember that we're capable of those things. That's not just something that dolphins can do. It's something that humans can do if we remember it. And interestingly enough, Pia and I have been spending time with dolphins all of our lives. Um, we grew up on opposite sides of the American continent, and yet we spent time with dolphins in both places long before we met each other. And so we have had that experience of the absolute joy and bliss that a human can have when interacting with these amazing, amazing beings. They also... They have a great, great honor and respect for the whales because the whales are some of the oldest life on earth. And they say the whales actually are here to help us remember who we are, which is the title of the second book. They, the whales are here to help us reawaken and to remember, 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 and learn to take in community and the collective and not just do things selfishly. Whales and dolphins both travel in pods. Humans don't do that. Humans separate into tribes, and then they fight each other. Whales and dolphins are more unified. Unified. Perfect. Thanks, Colin. Yeah, you don't hear about whales duking it out in the ocean, you know? <laughs> no. <laughs> I haven't heard of that happening. I mean, they all seem to be able to have this relationship with their environment. They, they do. do. They, they do. do. In fact, Marianne, I think that that these aquatic mammals have a better relationship with their environments than we do. They work so well within their environment. They, they just seem to, to have this, this flow and grace in the ocean that they live in way, way more, I don't know, gently, um, more deeply than maybe we do as humans on our terrestrial side of the, the earth. Larkma also talks about in the section on Earth, they talk about rocks and how rocks are teachers. One of the things that rocks teach us are how to slow down and be able to listen. They talk about communicating with rocks, and they say that the energy of stone talks to the energy of the crystalline human body. So we're working to move from a carbon-based human form to a crystalline-based form. And when we work with stones, it helps us understand the similarity of energy so that we can raise our vibration to match it, which is why more and more people have gotten interested in stones lately. Unfortunately, most New Agers think when they get interested in stones, that means they have to go out and grab them all, buy them up, and make them work for them. But what they tr Larkma is trying to get us to understand is that if you're going to truly communicate with rocks and stones, you have to ask their permission. Do you want to go with me? Would you like to help me work on a project? Is there anything I can offer you? Is there anything that you would like to offer me? And communicate. So basically when Lartma talks about all energy being equal on earth, they're trying to say that everything can teach everything and everyone else something. Well, you know, and that really resonates. That makes a lot of sense because if everything's energy, you know, it's instead of dominating other energy, we would ask for it to work with us. So I, I, yeah. I completely get that. Absolutely. Mm -mm -mm. Well, do you know, in, in the second book, which I thought was the first book, so you have to excuse me, but it's a good book, Remembering Who We Are, it, you know, it covers a lot. I mean, you talk about, you know, human evolution into this state of greater levels of health and well-being. You know, can you expand on that a little bit for our listeners? Sure. Lartma broke this book down into different sections. They started on this book with where we just left off talking about the other one, which is energy, understanding the essence of energy. And then they moved into helping us understand 
duality because here on this planet, everything is divided by the duality. We have hot, cold, male, female, and the big thing in duality is you, me, or us and them. And they're trying to get us to understand that we have misused duality the entire history of human existence because we have compartmentalized our ideas into you're over there and I'm over here. And the purpose of duality is to incorporate other perspectives and have a greater view of the whole. So there's an entire section on how duality has been perceived and how we can move further into perceptions of duality. And we we can personally talk about this because of what we said earlier in this interview about how different the two of us are um, we know that bringing our differences together creates a much more harmonious whole. It, it creates a much deeper, broader understanding of who we are individually and together as a couple. So the, the idea, the notion of duality is incredibly important to us personally. The next thing that Larkma talks about in remembering who we are is they break down how the third dimension is perceived. The emotional, the physical, they even talk about human sexuality, the physical, etheric relationship, and they talk about how we get hung up on belief and judgment here in the third dimension. So they talk about that, and then they move us into the elements of our foundation here on Earth, the Earth, air, fire, and water and how we can form a new foundation that's based on more of a higher vibratory elements than the elements we so love about Earth, that we can incorporate both. Then they give us tools for change, and they talk about our life purpose. They mention seven different components for healing, and then they give us a rainbow of healing essences, talking about the different colors and what the symbolism and meaning of each color is, what the energy represents and how to use it, and they even introduced, and when they wrote this book, they introduced a few colors that Cullen and I had never seen until we were traveling in Europe shortly after we released this book. And all of a sudden, we came across these beautiful, sparkling, vibratory colors that we had never seen before. We saw, we saw them in flowers. We saw them in the surface of the ocean reflecting off of the sun. We saw them in cloud formations. Instead of just seeing white clouds, in a blue background, we began to see these amazing rainbows of color that we weren't used to in the normal seven colors that that generally humans are able to see. So they finish talking about colors, and then they talk about the rainbow body that we're trying to achieve, and they define it and, and tell us things that we can do to achieve it more easily. And then they talk about achieving harmony and what's necessary to achieve harmony on this planet. And then the book closes with the chapter we mentioned before, the Ten Choices, which are guidelines for living based upon the Pleiadian principles that Larkma has offered humanity. Hmm. Well, you know, and it, it, there are so many great, um, I don't want to say tips, but really chapters in this book that explain so much. You know, and, and I found it to be just a very fascinating read. I think when a lot of people go through and they read these books, it all pulls together, kind of dovetails nicely together with one another. Thank you, Mary Ann. And I have to say, this book, Remembering Who We Are, is in its second printing, and Conversations with Larkma is in its third printing. So these books have been around for a long time, these first two. And we have people today who call us up or email us and say, you know, I'm rereading this again, and I I have to tell you, every time I read it, this is my sixth or seventh time, new insights come in because I have evolved from the last time I read it. So these two books remain sort of a... Foundational. Foundational basis, keep by the bedside table, open up and see what message is here for me today kind of book. That is true. You know, it's interesting, the first time I read the books, and then going back, you know, choosing what we're going to talk about today and the little notes I have, like other things are coming up. I'm like, wow, you know, it, it, you can see where this is something that you get different wisdom based on. It could even be the, you know, the day, the week, the month that you are going through different things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And they're being, they're being published now in other countries as well. Conversations with Larkma is available in Russian, French, and German. 
and remembering who we are is available in, in French. Well, congratulations. That's a big deal. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those are so quite small when everybody has access to this wisdom. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it is. It, it should be something that's wrapped around the globe. It's got such great wisdom, and I mean, Larkma is a real deal. I mean, I, I we've got a surprise coming up a little bit later that everyone can listen in on. But before we go there, you know, in remembering who we are, the book also talks about restoring emotional balance. Why is that so important? Well, that's a real key. Lartma has a different view on emotions. They call emotions everything that makes us uncomfortable. Frustration, anger, grief. Greed, unhappiness. Anything that makes us unhappy. Jealousy, so many different ideas. Those things are emotions. They say that our natural feeling state, what we came to this planet with from the stars, is love, joy, bliss, happiness, peace, trust, trust, compassion, trust, compassion, all of those things. And so they make a clear distinction, and they say we want here in duality always to be in that happy place. However, the emotions are a gift because the emotions tell us when we are out of balance. And as soon as we look at what we're thinking when we're feeling an emotion and regroup our thoughts, maybe choose a different way of perceiving what's making us unhappy, we automatically can gravitate back to that place of our natural feeling state of, of joy and peace. So emotionals are a gift of, of signposts to point us in the direction of where we're out of balance. Larkma speaks a great deal about the fact that nobody can cause us to have a negative emotion. No one can be blamed for putting us in a bad mood. We, each individual person, moderates or distinguishes if we're in a good mood or a bad mood, whether we're having a really good day or a bad hair day. They make it really clear that we have to monitor our own emotions and we cannot blame someone for You know, we we often say, well, that person made me so mad, or that person really upset me. Well, from their perspective, that's not possible. We do that to ourselves simply because we're out of balance in our own sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's being, and I love how there, you you just start the chapter for it that talks about restoring emotional balance, and it gives like tips on what people can do to make that change for themselves. It's all that personal responsibility. It's like, hey, you're feeling out of balance. This is what you can do to get back in balance. Absolutely. It works, too. And and something they told us um, from the very, very beginning is the faster we attempt that rebalancing, the more quickly we will actually make a difference in how we're living our lives. If, If we have something that upsets us, instead of mulling it over and and thinking about it and thinking about it, they tell us, if you make an immediate change in your attitude about what is going on, that will allow that, that mood or that situation to change much, much more quickly. And we've noticed that in our own personal lives and out in the world, that the, the quicker someone reacts to something, the faster they can get through it. Hmm. That's fascinating. Well, my goodness, remembering who we are has so much wisdom. Before we leave leave that book, I would love for you to share with us, and you kind of touched on a little bit about a rainbow body. What is a rainbow body? Rainbow body is the combination of the etheric body, which is our blueprint for our physical form, and the physical form that we are evolving to as we let go of density and move into higher vibration. It's not, we have always before seen ourselves as either physical in form or etheric in form. Rainbow body is a combination of both. It's the opportunity to have your physical body, it's such a vibration of high vibration that it can travel like the etheric body does. It requires, um, Less density in diet, less density in thought, less density in almost everything that you touch here in 3D physicality. So it's a process to achieve rainbow body, but a well worth worthwhile process because 
when you do this, you have the opportunity to ascend to the rainbow body without going through the process of death. I think what, what Larkma means basically about the rainbow body is that in conjunction with the earth ascending, which many of us believe and trust it's going to become much lighter, much less dense, and in a completely different form, the rainbow body is the human's ability to ascend with the earth as she makes her changes so that we can do this together. That's good, Colin. Yeah. That's well, very nicely. I, I'm so glad that you shared that because it is a journey that we're all taking together, you know, and will everyone make that transition or will some people not? Everyone has a choice. Mm-hmm. I think I think each human has the same spark, the same ability to make choices, as Pia just suggested, to make better decisions, decisions that have to do with with the, the understanding of the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, or the Sanskrit term ahimsa, which means of being absolutely of no harm to any other being, or the Mayan term in Lakesh, which means I am another yourself. Some people who don't believe this, who think it's just an airy-fairy idea, will choose to go through the process of death rather than a rainbow body ascension simply because they don't believe it's possible. And that's their right and that's their choice. One of the greatest gifts Lartma tells us over and over again that we have on this planet is the gift of choice. And we make choices moment by moment every day of our lives. So if someone wants to achieve rainbow body and they say, that sounds like what I'd like to experience, they start aiming their choices towards the higher vibratory conscious way of living, and then they're making the choice to do that. Which means, which means every choice they make is for the highest good of all, not just for themselves. Well, and how powerful is that? My goodness, you know? It certainly could help heal the world. It would change, it would change the world dramatically if if most humans would have that kind of of heart and thought process of every time they do something, every time they leave their house, every time they go to work, every time they step out on the street, making choices that help everyone instead of simply thinking about their own agenda, it it would transform the world in in a spectacularly very, very quick way. Well, and it it really does seem that we're at this point in history, in our in our evolution, and at, at this time where we really need change, and you can feel it it's taking place. Yeah, absolutely. We're we're at that critical place. I think that many of us think that if we don't make choices to turn things around, it's possible that it could be. And I underlined the word could be too late to actually make a difference. Yeah, it, it'll be really interesting to see how, what, human, you know, what humans do, and, you know, first of all, with, in regards to the planet, and then also what Larkma and Palladians and what um, other beings that are um, looking for the best interest of humans and the planet and our evolution, what they're doing to help us move in the right direction or guide us in the right direction. Yes. 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 There there are so many beings around the earth at this time doing that very thing, Marianne. There are so many energies that are here to help. And Larkma tells us often, all you have to do is ask for our help. And they don't mean, they don't mean The Pleiadians specifically, they mean all kinds of beings, the angelic kingdom, interstellar beings, um, my gosh, the David kingdom. There are so many groups of energies that want to help in a very, very positive way. 2019 is a pivotal year, Larkma tells us, and we hear that from very other, many other sources also. It's a pivotal year because a lot of things are going to be falling apart. And the theme for this year seems to be emerging that 2019 is a year of collaboration. 
What can we do to collaborate together to help make the things that are falling apart be restructured in a way that's better for everybody? And they've dropped little hints that 2020 is going to bring some momentous change so that we should really take advantage of what's falling apart in 2019 and collaborating together to make a difference so that we greet whatever's coming in 2020 with open hearts and higher awareness. LARCMA is the first to say that they do not make predictions. Um, They say this because they know that human choice is such a huge element such a huge part of how things can come about, how things can change, how things can evolve. And so they tell people over and over again, we don't make predictions because it's up to you folks. It's your choices that are going to make the most difference. Hmm. And how true that is. I mean, because of free will and free choice, I mean, we have, you know, good for us. I mean, we get the ability to make these choices and make some dramatic and positive changes. Yes. Yes, we do. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break. And when we come back, we have a very special surprise. We're going to be talking with LARCMA, channeled through Dr. Pia Orlean and Colin Smith. It is going to be a profound discussion. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne. We'll be right back after these messages. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. There comes a moment when you realize you're somewhere special, when you discover that each beautiful creature that you see has been rescued from a life of absolute horror and brought to this incredibly free place. Here is where their lives were forever changed and where yours will as well. Discover over 500 tigers, bears, and lions at the brand new visitor center at the Wild Animal Sanctuary just outside Denver. For more information, visit wildanimalsanctuary.org. Discover true freedom at the Wild Animal Sanctuary. Have you ever had the sense that your thoughts might actually be doing something? Ancient secrets of manifesting have been masterfully revealed in the award-winning book Manifesting 123 by Ken Elliott. For the first time, the author's experiences and stories in this book describe exactly how your thoughts can create anything. You've been doing this all your life, but it's never been fully explained for you until now. Visit Manifesting123.com for more information today. Manifesting123.com There are nearly 2 million Americans living with amputation. Many live right here in San Antonio. Becoming an amputee can be scary, frustrating, isolating, but there's no reason to feel alone. The San Antonio Amputee Foundation is here to help support you and guide you toward resources such as home and car modifications and even prosthetic limbs. For more information or to make a donation, visit saamputee.org. We'll help you live a full, active life, one step at a time. San Antonio Amputee Foundation, healing limbs, hearts, and and souls. Welcome back to Moments with Marianne. We're here today with special guests, Dr. Pia Orlean and Colin Smith, and they're here to share with us their connection with LARCMA. LARCMA is a loving group of Palladians who are here to help us consciously and spiritually evolve. Let's go ahead and get started, and let's welcome back Pia and Colin, and now LARCMA, to the show. 
Hello, dear one. We are Larkma. What a beautiful heart song. We can feel vibrations of high energy all around you when you speak this. You have a great deal of self-confidence in knowing that you are here to help the world. It radiates out through your aura, and we feel great joy that you like doing what you do to help the world. We are pleased to be in your presence, and we'd be interested in finding out how you feel we could accelerate your evolution. Do you have some questions you would like us to answer? I do. I do. And I'm very curious about you. And so with great respect... I ask you these questions. Why should human beings listen to the information that you bring forth? Thank you for your deep respect and for the way that you phrase your questions. We appreciate that and we return our answers with equal respect for you, for it takes teamwork to expand conscious understanding. There is no should about what we offer for people to listen to. There is no should that you should listen to us. It is simply an opportunity to share a different perspective. One thing that we are quite fond of always telling people is not to believe us, but instead to trust in your own heart. What we do when we communicate with humans is to open up their hearts so that they may find the truth within their own hearts. When we share our perspective, you will know on your own intuitively, whether that resonates with you as something that you should know or trust or whether it does not. And because of this, and also because we are working to empower humans to recognize that all answers are held within them anyway, we would say again, don't believe us, but trust in your own heart. If what we say resonates with you as being truthful, then you will know how to proceed with it. If it does not, (coughs) you have the opportunity to either expand your perspective or to say, no, that's not a match. And there is no should about either way. Humans grow according to their own choice, according to their own decisions, and we are not trying to force change upon you. We simply are here to support you in the choices you make. So where does your wisdom come from? We are a much older species than you are. Your species is not nearly as evolved consciously, although your species has great mental awareness, <clears throat> great mental awareness and the desire to grow and expand. But the consciousness that we have comes from heart wisdom, wisdom that recognizes that everything is connected. All energy has intelligence and all energy impacts and affects every other bit of energy. So therefore, while humans still see things from a dualistic perspective of you and me, this and that, good and bad, we see things more as a polar perspective, where they may have different energies, but they are linked together and they complete a whole. We come from a star system much outside of your galaxy, and we use the Pleiades as our base because the Pleiades is the closest base that supports our life form to be able to help you as you evolve on this planet. What is it called? Evolve is to understand from your heart. <clears throat> We're sorry, Pia's voice is a little problematic. Please give us a moment. <clears throat> To evolve is to open your understanding so that your heart and your head communicate with one another. Humans have been poorly trained for a long time to rely upon what they think is the highest wisdom and to ignore your intuition or your heart knowing. So evolution from our perspective is reopening that channel between heart and mind so you may use the highest and best of both your brain and your intuition so that you know moment by moment what energy is required to accomplish something that serves not only yourself but the highest good of all. Recognizing that the highest good of all is an important goal is an evolutionary step. 
ignoring the duality as you have perceived it for so long as opposites, instead beginning to see that duality is just a shift in perspective, is also an evolutionary step. So to evolve is to open up these levels of understanding and also to help you re- realize that there are many aspects of yourself that are not are awakened in this third dimensional consciousness. These aspects of yourself come in through your dream state or your meditations or in the experience you call deja vu. When you have deja vu, you're experiencing a similarity of experience that reminds you this feels familiar, but you are not yet aware that the reason it feels familiar is because you are experiencing something quite like what's going on in another dimension simultaneously. Does that make sense to you? Yes, I hear what you're saying. And so it has a question. I have a lot of, I'm an interviewer (laughs) by nature, and I'm asking questions that help me understand not only our place in the galaxy, but yours as well. That is an excellent question and a very wise perspective to ask what is the place. Our place in the galaxy is to expand the energy of love, which is the highest force in the universe. This planet on which you live, this Earth, is a planet that has been an experimental station to see how consciousness can make an evolutionary leap, how consciousness can expand quickly, and how the human form, physical form, can accommodate that conscious leap. Not only we and others who work from the Pleiades, but many, many beings of love and light throughout the galaxy are focused upon your planet specifically right now because the time for an accelerated evolutionary leap on your planet is here. Although time really only exists in the third dimension, we use that phrase rather loosely. It means the moment is present, the energy is in flow, Everything is in alignment to be able to have the opportunity to make a conscious evolutionary leap and to have the education that we can share and that you gather on your own from your own intuitive insights and your own research to help you understand how you can participate and co-create the outcome of this evolutionary leap. We are here simply because we love humanity and we support you We ourselves have been through an evolutionary process much similar to the one humans are going through now. Although we did not have the emotional aspect that humanity has. Emotions from our point of view are not your entire range of feeling states. As a cosmic citizen and a divine spark of light that is joined to every other spark of light in the universe, you have a natural feeling state that you may describe as love, joy, trust, compassion, kindness, and peace. That is the overriding energy of love. You come into this world, into your earthly body, with all of those feeling states intact. Emotions are a gift They were given to this species to help guide them how to always move back into their natural feeling state. In other words, your emotions are fear, anger, jealousy, grief, anything that makes you feel uncomfortable. Even levels of frustration can be an emotion. So these things, because of their very nature of being uncomfortable, are signposts for you to say something's out of alignment. What do I need to do to adjust? And through that simple conscious awareness that something is out of balance, you are being shown how to drop your judgments, drop your belief systems, and look within yourself to see what is out of alignment. How am I making myself feel this way because of my thoughts? And so the next step is to examine your thoughts. See how they are attached to an erroneous belief system and then jettison those thoughts. Therefore, the emotion goes away and you return to your natural place of balance and calm. In our evolutionary process, we did not have the emotional signposts that you have. And so much of our experience was more intense and protracted than yours is. 
even though you've been on this path for quite some time. We are probably in your earth years, so much older than you, that you would find it out of your scientific understanding of how long time exists. But the energy never dies. The energy is always present. And our energy has now been drawn into being present here with you so that you may find places where you resonate with us and where you open to your own intuitive guidance and your own mental questioning and all the things that make you who you are so that you can become the highest version of yourself. Well, and so do you have an ethereal body or a physical body from where you speak? You would refer to us as having an etheric body. It is energy, as we already said, but you also are energy. Humans' energy is compacted into a more dense physical form that is more static and unchanging. Not that it is not changing altogether, but that it takes a longer period for change to occur. You think a thought, and then it takes some time for that thought to manifest into physical reality. We think a thought, and instantly the manifestation occurs. Our form, from our description, would be considered to be wave form, while you are still in particle form. That's a physics, quantum physics explanation. Does that make sense to you? Yes, that does. We also can pull our waveform together and manifest in forms that we can be seen. And we have done that on this planet in years past. But we do not do that at this time because our experience has educated us. When we have presented ourselves in a form that humans could recognize on this planet in the past, humans cast us into the role of gods. We do not wish to be considered gods, so we are just another form of energy, just like you, although we are a bit older and have a few more perspectives from our cosmic viewpoint. Additionally, when humans tend to view someone else as a god, they give over their own power and their own sense of knowingness. Our job is to help you remember that you have all the answers within yourself and that all you have to do is make conscious choices. So therefore, at this time, we are making the choice not to appear in human form so that humans will not make the mistake again of saying, oh, give us all the answers, rather than saying, here's my hand, help lead me to find the answers myself. Well, and that pulls up several questions for me. And one is, do you have an understanding of a supreme being? And the second one is, With your role here on Earth to help with humans in evolution, how do you see that unfolding? Two very good questions. We'll start with the one of our role. We have been involved in humanity's evolution since prior to the time of the Maya, when we came to give them the Mayan calendar and the understanding of managing energy rather than guiding their lives with time. We see our role as being able to expand wherever you are without infringing upon your own choice. In other words, we offer our perspective, but it remains your job to choose whether to accept it or whether to reject it. That way we do not interfere in your own evolutionary process by forcing something upon you as a conqueror would do. Instead, we show you what is possible And you get to choose whether or not to accept it and when to accept it. And it is a process. Many are accepting our perspective much more quickly now in the last 10 or 20 years than they have ever before. Many are being willing to move outside of their old third dimensional paradigm of what is truth and begin to see another paradigm of possibilities. We have a council of elders that we call the Pleiadian Elders Council who come together and give us guidance on how to disseminate our information. We also learn from humans. With Pia and Cullen, they accept and investigate our perspective, making their own decisions, and they answer questions for us about how they make decisions, about what they do educating us about the human process. 
So it becomes teamwork, and we work together for the highest good of all. When humans evolve, you will be radiating out higher vibrational energy into the cosmos. So it is of benefit not only to your species on this planet and to the planet herself, but it is also beneficial for all living beings in the cosmos to have a higher vibratory energy radiating out from humans having an evolved consciousness. So, therefore, we listen to the Pleiadian Elders Council, we listen to the group that we work with, Tia and Cullen, and we learn from each synchronization we do. We may ask you questions. We may assimilate more understanding through the answers or questions that you share with us. It's all an energetic expansion process. As for a supreme being, it is our feeling that energy is equal throughout the universe, and yet some energies are more awakened than others. And the energy of love is the most potent energy in the universe because it is the most awakened. So we would consider love what you would consider a supreme being. We do not see it in the form of a God who gives orders or tells us what to do. We do not see it as a God who punishes us if we do not do what they say. We do not see it in that way at all. We see it as an energy source that when we follow the guidance of love, it pulses within our hearts and with our very wave motion being so that we know this feels correct. This feels correct. And therefore, we can act together for the highest good of all. The information that comes from our elders council is given to us to help guide our specific duties and our specific choice of roles that we play. And yet we are capable to tune in to the highest power of love at any time we choose as well. So we're all working together. And it's not a hierarchical structure for us as it is seen as a hierarchical structure on your planet. Does that make sense to you? It does. It explains um, your perspective as well as how things work here. Very interesting. Well, and... Thank you. Yes, and, you know, so some of the other questions I have for you. Um, so has your race ever been involved in battles? Yes. Our race has been involved in conflict, not in the way that you have conflict in terms of war but conflict at a level of trying to convince others of a different way to do things. Before we learned how to choose the highest good for all, conflict was a part of our evolutionary path. Because we did not have the gift of emotions to show us when we were out of balance, conflict for us was perceived differently, and it was more challenging than perhaps you perceive conflict here, although We would certainly say that war and conflict at emotional levels is deeply painful. But it was not as long a process for evolution to see that conflict is wrong when it is so painful as it is when there is no emotional part involved. So our portion of going through evolution with conflict took a while longer for it to shift and change so that we could understand truly the highest good for all. Well, and with coming and um, coming through the two people that you're working with, you know, what do you see for Earth? Are you here to help us or to warn us? What is your, the ultimate goal for you? The ultimate goal for us is to help spread as much information about human choice as possible, to teach humans that all the answers are in their hearts, that they do not need to rely on teachers, leaders, healers, gods, religion. They only need to tune into their own heart and know that they are connected to the highest power in the universe, the power of love. That requires humans to step away from belief systems, conflict, being willing to open their viewpoints to see other possibilities. And it's a difficult thing to do for humans. So our goal is not to warn you, per se. 
but to show you other possibilities and honor the fact that you have choice and that this is your journey. Our goal is to expand the capacity for love as much as we can by sharing our perspective so that you open your own heart to all possibilities and you avoid some of the pitfalls of evolution that we experience. We do not interfere with choices that you make. We have only one area in which we are always available to make a difference, make a change, and that is we will not allow those who wish to blow up the earth completely through nuclear means to have that happen. Yes, small nuclear things will occur on this planet and have occurred on this planet, but none so large as to annihilate all life on the planet. We have many times stopped someone whose finger was on the button by distracting them, by changing the energy around them until their volatile emotional state of anger or need for control could subside and they could see there was perhaps a better way. That is the one thing that we will step in and do. For the evolution that you speak of, the heart-centered evolution, how long can you estimate it will take humans to get to that place? Well, that's a very third-dimensional question, and time doesn't exist where we are, so it's not in our area of expertise to predict timing of how long it's going to take. One human heart can be closed completely and some event can open that heart in a minute or two and all of a sudden they see a different way. For someone else, they may have to have multiple experiences before they are willing to let their heart open to be able to see other perspectives. And it's human by human. However, as some humans begin to allow in more of the love energy, it radiates around them and others pick up on that vibration and they wish to join it. And so more positive choices are made. We see to try to estimate something in your linear time frame that 2019 is going to be a most challenging year for you as has 2018. But by 2020, things should accelerate to such a point that humanity will make some choices collectively to begin to change things. And by 2022, you should have much more balance and ease of flow in your evolutionary journey. What that's going to look like, we cannot define because of human choice. Humans can make this very difficult and destroy the parts of the planet, or humans can make this easier by joining together and loving and forgiving and sharing with one another. That element of human choice determines how quickly you reach the goal or if you reach the goal. Some people have already made a choice that they do not wish to continue on this path and therefore they will die as humans believe it must be always possible. They will die and they will be transported into a holding area until it is time for them to reincarnate somewhere else. When they reincarnate, they will continue their life path and their life lessons, and they will believe they are on a planet that is Earth, but it is not. It is another place in the universe, but this planet is moving into a higher vibratory state, and it will carry with it all of those who wish to operate from the higher vibratory state. So you see, dear one, nothing is wrong, and each human has their own choice. You choose to live through these challenging times, and make a difference by changing your own vibration and allowing yourself to make highest good for all choices from your heart into your consciousness, or you choose to stay attached to the program you were already involved with, learning like you do in school one lesson at a time, which can be quite painful, until you die out of this physical form and reincarnate again into another. It is your choice which path you take. That's a very good answer. And, you know, it and it has me thinking, like the next question I have for you, and I do this with all due respect, and I, um, I please don't think that this is a judgment question. But Dear one, we can see that you come from a respectful place, and we feel no judgment in your presence. 
Please feel free to ask whatever you would like to know. We honor and respect your curiosity and your wishing to understand more. Well, I do have a very um, strong desire to understand who it is that you are. And with that, what authority do you, and I know we talked about the Palladian Council, what authority do you have to say the things that you do? Where does that come from? No one gives us authority. No one stops us either. Because we have evolved to the point where we do everything from a place of love, And because love is the strongest force in the universe, we may take that love wherever we choose. Love is its own authority. Love has no other ruler. And that is the place from which we operate. Because we always operate, never intending to harm anyone, and always from a place of love, and always without judgment, then there is no governing system to tell us, say this or don't say that. However, Because we do not speak your language, our language is through musical tones and feeling states. We do not speak with words. So therefore, because we do use human languaging by accessing the libraries of the black brains of the two humans with whom we work, we sometimes do make errors in the words that we are choosing. That is not meant to be a judgment or a bad thing. It is meant to be a place where a human says, wait a minute, explain that. I didn't understand that, or that sounds offensive, or that doesn't seem right, questioning us so we may choose more appropriate words, which will come from love, but may be more applied to the correct circumstance a little better. We are still learning too, you see. So while we do not have anyone to say do this or do that in terms of authority, we do have the power of love as its own authority to which we rely on. Do you still make trips to Earth? It sounds like you do with um, making sure that things don't happen at a catastrophic level. But do you still interact with humans um, in other ways? Yes. Those who synchronize with us or who synchronize on one of our live calls and have our energy there, once you're synchronized with us, any human may at any time say, Larkma, please give me Pleiadian stardust and our energy will help you in whatever circumstance you are working with. We cannot solve problems for you. We cannot do anything to alter what's going on, but we can sprinkle stardust to help you find the strength and the answers that you need in any challenging situation. So anyone may, as they choose, say, Larkma, please sprinkle your stardust. Please help us through this situation, and we will do our best to change the energy so it is for the highest benefit for all. And the highest and best good for um, humanity and the planet? Yes, that is the highest good for all. Whatever is best for humanity and the planet is also the best for the cosmos. For as we said a bit earlier, when humanity comes from a higher vibratory place, the planet is helped. And when the planet and humanity is extending their thoughts and their energy from the higher vibratory place, that also radiates out into the cosmos, helping all beings in the cosmos. Well, and then it has me thinking as well. So you come, um, I don't know how long that um, Colin and Pia have been working with you publicly. Um, We did have a little discussion on that, but I don't have those notes in front of me. But is there a specific reason that you come during this time in in human history? This time in human history is a time that humans have never seen before. Humanity has gone through many changes, including cataclysms and all matter of geophysical changes, major wars, revolutions, all matter of things that have changed humanity. But this is the point where humanity has the opportunity to make a quantum leap, a quantum leap not only in conscious understanding, but a quantum leap in physical form. You are at the point of being able to make choices to move out of the density of the form that you have now, which is a form of static, unchanging denseness as opposed to waveform that is moving and always changing, 
You have the choice and the chance now to elevate your beingness, your body that you have with your consciousness, into a different form by changing viewpoints, by lightening the density. For instance, humans, for the most part on this planet, still eat meat. That means that they are still involved in the act of killing. Killing can never be for the highest good of all, for it takes a life, which is a direct contradiction to the highest good of all. So therefore, when humans consider taking this practice and using it as part of how they sustain themselves, they are taking in the conscious belief that they need the animal sacrifice or that they cannot live without the meat. But they're also taking in the pain and the fear and the whatever else the animal may have been feeling at the time its life was taken from it. And that becomes part of the density of the human physical form. With the opportunity to make this quantum leap, humans may begin to say, I don't need to nourish myself in the way I thought I did. I can begin to change and have a vegetarian diet. Or a vegetarian can say, you know, that's beginning to feel a little dense for me now too. I think I'll become vegan. And eventually, you will be able to sustain yourself through what we call a diet of love, light, and water. That is, you will sustain yourself from what comes through the cosmos to support your form, for your form will be waveform rather than carbon-based form. You will be a different structure, and you will be sustained differently because you are a different structure. However, having said all this, remember, that is choice. Each human has the choice to move into this waveform, or what you would call etheric form, And there is a point along the spectrum where you can move into rainbow body form if you choose. Rainbow body form means that you can be in wave form like us in an etheric form, but then generate yourself back into a dense form if necessary, into physical form again for a specific task. So you can move back and forth from one to the other. We call that rainbow body form because it contains all of the elements of all of the energies in the cosmos, every color vibration, which has every energy that you can imagine, are present in rainbow body form. You yourself, dear one, have a great energy of the rainbow radiating all around you. You have most of your life. We see you as a three-year-old being curious, being out in the yard and looking at everything, flowers and bugs and rocks and trees. You have been curious your entire life. Is that not true? That is true, without a doubt. And do you remember yourself as a little girl at three, outside, and seeing all these wonders, and being curious about what makes them? Can you contact that memory? I'm still still curious today. (laughs) Very good. That's a part of you that allows you to continually to expand, and it invites in all the energies of the rainbow to help in that exploration of what you are doing. Well, and, you know, and and that's interesting because is that the same curiosity, and are you involved in helping to advance, let's say, our our medical um, that we currently have to help people heal from these different diseases or maybe our technology so we can kind of move beyond some of the things that um, currently keep us stuck. In the book that we asked P.N. Cullen to make for us, we wrote through them that all cancer comes from thought form. Your medical science is still trying to separate the gene that causes cancer or the problem outside of the human that causes the cancer. While there are certainly carcinogenic elements within your environment, the cause of almost every dis-ease you experience in human form comes from the thoughts that you think, comes from your belief system. That is the greatest potential for medicine to evolve, is understanding that energy causes your dis-ease and energy also can cure your dis-ease. The physical form is the slowest to respond to the thought forms you put out. So therefore, conversations or thoughts you may have had some time in the past, such as, I wonder if I'm going to get sick from this, or I wonder if that's going to make me sick, or I wonder 
or whatever it is you're wondering. Those thoughts migrate into your physical field, and they can manifest things as you bump into energies that are problematic in your third dimension. Your healing is not simply a matter of positive thoughts like Pollyanna, however. Your healing comes from understanding consistently that every time you move into a lower vibratory place, you are causing your own dis-ease. And every time you do that, you need to correct yourself, put yourself back into your core knowingness that everything is all right, that everything proceeds as it should. Some people have come here to experience a particular physical state that someone might consider as a dis-ease. Others fall into it simply because they are making choices or choosing words that are not beneficial to themselves or others. So these circumstances of what you call needing to be healed or advancing your medicine need to be addressed from the energetic perspective. We have been trying to help humanity understand not only advanced medicine, but also advanced technology because your technology which you think is so advanced, it's quite archaic. We travel in light ships that can manifest and be seen or not. They are not ships that you see made of metal that NASA put together. There are many ways that you can transport yourself telepathically through your thoughts and your intentions. There are ways that you can communicate telepathically without cell phones and computers and telephones. There are ways that you can do healing from a distance to help others support their own awareness that they have the power to heal themselves. And you can do your own healing by accepting and continuing to bring yourself into higher and higher vibrations. All of these things are part of our plan to help you evolve. But the first step that has to be made is that you have to learn to listen to your own heart because all of these things that we're telling you are already stored there. At some level, you remember this, but most of humanity has forgotten, and you are just now at this opportunity of making the quantum leap, being aware that you can remember, that you can remember, that you can and do remember. The energies are present now, and that is why we are here now. There was energy present for an advance in consciousness when we were here many times before. For instance, with the Mayan calendar, there was an opening for humans to understand to govern their lives from energy rather than time. That opening passed and humans did not take advantage of it. There was an energetic opening during the period of Christ consciousness when Christ and Mary tried to help humans understand you too are part of God. You too can do what I do. All you have to do is awaken and remember. There have been many portals of opportunity for humans, but none as great as this. This one is the greatest opportunity because it is at this point that all energy from any realm you wish to investigate is here because it is the moment the earth has the chance to transition into a different form. And the consciousnesses that are here on this earth also share that opportunity. This is why we are here, and many others as well, including Arcturians, Syrians, Androgens, the Angelic Kingdom, former masters who were in human form, all sorts of energies that are from love in whatever form they choose to operate, are here to support and help this evolution. With that being said, we talk about beloved beings who are here to help the human race. And there are also some that are not. So how do we discern who's here to help us for the greater good and who's not? Ah, excellent question. And indeed, you are quite correct. There are many who are not of the highest good and who come from what you may phrase as a darker energy. But we do not mean like that like the opposite of dark and light. We just mean a denser place, but we do not have the human languaging to give it another name. So for that purposes, we will call it dark energy. These ones have constricted themselves away from the power of love and attached themselves to the desire for control. And they have used this planet unrelentingly interfering with the programs for human evolution. 
Doing such things is introducing the product of sugar cane to the planet, which was never natural to the planet. Sugar is an addictive substance, which you probably know, is more addictive than heroin or cocaine. What you may not know is that sugar tears, tears holes in your light body and prevents you from accessing the truth when you make your connections with the highest source of love. So sugar is an action of the dark force. It's why when you become emotionally upset as a species, so many of you run out for cookies. It gives you, or chocolate, it gives you a temporary boost to make you feel better because it changes the endorphins in your brain and your blood. But it also is doing damage to you at a cellular level and preventing you from accessing the answers in your own heart. That is the work of the dark forces. And yes, there are dark forces here now who are indeed interfering with what you are doing on your evolutionary journey. They can interfere by injecting such thoughts as, I'm afraid, something's going to happen to me. And you start wondering as a conscious being, where's that coming from? I wasn't afraid five minutes ago. What is that? So the dark energy can indeed influence humanity. But when you are operating from a place of love, and you keep yourself consistently balanced, less influence in the dark is possible. Now back to your question, how do you discern if the energy is from love or if the energy is harmful? First of all, don't believe any of it, including us. Never believe something outside of yourself. Listen to the perspective that is being offered and then run it by your own heart. If your heart feels good from the information, if you feel safe, if you feel the energy of love, if you feel expanded, if you feel like you are growing and you want to serve, all the information you're getting is coming from love and it is here to help you. If you feel frightened, if you feel like you can't breathe properly or your stomach's upset or you don't know what to make of it, then you have to consider One of two possibilities. The first one is that the energy is indeed coming from a dark source. The second possibility is that what you have just heard is triggering a block in your own energetic field. And you have to figure out if you need to get rid of a belief system to allow the truth to come in. Or if what you're feeling truly is from something unsavory. It takes an opening in consciousness to be able to discern that quite quickly and easily. And that comes when you listen to your heart. If you listen to your heart and not your brain, then you will know immediately, is this something that I need to change because I have a block that is a little scary to change this block? Or is this coming from a dark energy who wishes to influence me? That element of fear is your trigger to figure out where it's coming from. And your heart knows the difference. Does that explain it? That does explain it. That does explain it. That's um, a very good way of putting it. Well, and is there a reason why dark energies that we were just discussing are allowed on this planet? Allowed is a long word that we are not necessarily in favor of. What we would say is those who started this experiment with this planet thought everything was running along believed everything, trusted everything, was running along as planned because love set up the experiment. But the dark infiltrated without those who were creating the experiment paying close attention. In other words, it was sort of a sneak attack. All of a sudden, the dark was here doing things to disrupt the experiment. Ever since that point, there has been what you might call a battle between the dark and the light. And right now, you are on the point of the light winning the battle. Because of this, the dark is becoming more desperate, and you see more controls and more attempts at control in every area of your humanity. You see it at the financial levels, the political levels, the weather levels, where they interfere with the weather, the selling of products that you are supposed to be having to nourish you, and yet they are full of GMOs, poisons, sugar, all kinds of things that do not hurt, nourish human or any other form. That is the last grasp, the last grip of the dark trying to retain control over this planet. 
And it's going to stop because love is the stronger force. And enough humans are awakened and awakening now that love will be exponentially expanded as a wave across the planet. And so the dark will be losing control. And yet, from your linear perspective, you're still in a place where 2018 and 2019 and the beginning of 2020 are still under the influence of dark, even though you can see simultaneously more openings and awareness and more light pouring in. A balance point has not been reached yet. Does that explain it? Mm-hmm. That sure does. That sure does. Well, and if you had something that you would like to conclude this discussion with, what would that be? We would like to conclude our discussion with gratitude. Gratitude for your intelligence and your heart wisdom both and asking questions that can help you expand and can help others expand through you as you do your work. We would like to say that it takes teamwork in any project and this project of humanity making the quantum leap in consciousness takes a team who is coming from a place of love. We are very fond of the saying in Lakesh, I am another yourself. We feel that you, humans, are the same as we. We are the same as you. We are all energy. We are all divine sparks of light. And we are here to help you remember that because we love you and we want you not to suffer We want you to experience the freedom of wave motion and to be able to serve here or in other places of your choosing as is needed in the universe. We are trying to help awaken you to become cosmic citizens. It actually popped up as you were saying that. So with the, um, with all that we've been discussing and how you are involved in this planet and the evolution, are humans seeded from the Palladians? Humans are seeded from many, many different kingdoms together. You've heard America is described as the melting pot. Well, we would say the entire planet is a melting pot, a mix of different seedings, a mix of different ways of being in human form. Yes, Pleiadians have comprised part of your makeup. So have Arcturians, so have Syrians, so has the angelic kingdom. And you are part of the lineage of Christ and Mary. All of that is part of who you are as one who is awakening with light. There are some humans who are not related to this, you would call it a genealogical heritage. There are some humans who have just incarnated into their experience to experience life on what it is like to be human. But those who are interested in what we are speaking about, those who are asking questions such as you are asking, or spreading information such as Pia and Cullen are, are all seeded from other realms. You are partially from the earth and you are partially from the stars. And it doesn't really matter which star you align it to, whether it is Pleiadian or Arcturian or angelic or whatever it is. The key point to remember is that being part star being, you are free. You have the ability to revert to waveform as you awaken and remember. You are also part of this planet, and so you have the ability to serve this planet as you chose to do when you chose to incarnate during this time. You are both. You are many. You are all. Well, I think that's a very good note to end on. I thank you, Larkma. This has been a very enlightening discussion, and I've enjoyed my time with you. We've enjoyed our time as well with you, dear one, and we wish you to have much joy and continued expansion in your own path, for as you do so, you are helping the world. We love you. Good always. Welcome back, everyone. We've been speaking with Larkma, who's been channeled through Pia and Colin, And what a profound discussion that was. I felt their heart energy. I hope you did as well. Man, that was such an inspirational discussion. We're going to give Pia and Colin just a moment here to readjust their energies. They're going to be joining us right back. Larkma is the real deal. I have worked with other people who channel entities. And hands down, Larkma really has their hearts in the right place. You don't hear me say this often, and I'm so glad that we got to spend this time together with Larkma. 
It looks like Pia and Colin are ready to rejoin us. So let's talk about their most recent book, Palladian Earth Energy Astrology. You both have to be so excited. It's getting such great reviews. We are excited. And the main reason we're excited is because this is the third in the Larkma Trilogy. And it sort of wraps everything together in one package where people can say, oh, now I have something to work with on all these principles that Larkma's been sharing with us. Because now we can look at how to change the way we manage and navigate our days. We've been living under the laws of time and the laws of the calendar. Um, the, the Gregorian calendar was introduced in the latter part of the 16th century. I think in, in the, I think it was 1580s. And that calendar changed the way people looked at how they spent their time, their days, their minutes, their hours. It took us away from nature. And then, and then approximately a hundred years after that, the first mechanical clock was invented. And that was in the mid 17th century, I think eight, 1650s. And my gosh, we have been imprisoned and we have been enslaved ever since in, in those two human concepts of time. It has changed the way Humanity has dealt with life. We used to work with natural cycles, day, night, change of seasons. When we're hungry, we eat. When we're sleepy, we go to bed. That introduction of calendar and clock changed that completely almost overnight. And then when we introduced electric lights to go along with that, we completely stepped away from nature's rhythms. So Larkma has very gently over this time been suggesting that we don't have to do that so much. And one way to get away from it is to learn what the energy of each day brings. They have a system they have shared with us that they gave to the Maya 5,000 years ago. It was incorporated into the Mayan calendar. But the act of the Mayan calendar became unpopular and phased out of people's awareness because of these things that Cullen has just spoken of, the Gregorian calendar and the first mechanical clock. The system given to the Maya were completely forgotten, and it became just a calendar about the end of time or the end of the world, which is not ever what it was about. It was about energy. So now, modern Pleiadian group, working with the two of us, Larkma, has reinstituted this system of understanding the two cycles of energy that make a difference in how we navigate our lives successfully. The first system is the universal energies, and there are 13 of those. And they spiral one upon another, building and building and building from the initiation point until the completion point where we integrate everything that's happened within those 13 energies. At the same time, we're spiraling through 20 Earth energies, which basically describe all of our experiences here on Earth. The Earth energies have a low vibration and a high vibration because here in duality, we have a choice of how we're going to respond to the energy. For example... One of the energies that's here today, the 13th, is the energy of healing. The positive way of using healing is to cur- using the courage to heal imbalances. And that can be personal imbalances, it can be community imbalances, family imbalances, or planetary imbalances. But that's a really positive way to say, oh, the energy here is to support this, this day, Sunday the 13th, let's use it. At the same time, People who are not paying attention to it or who don't choose to take the high road may take on too many responsibilities and not be able to fulfill them, or they may wind up avoiding responsibility altogether. So looking at the earth energies in this way and the universal energies that go with them gives each person sort of a flavor of the day and a knowing how to guide what's coming up. Today is also a universal energy of eight, which is the energy of connecting. And what a good energy to work with on a day of healing and balances, knowing that you can connect with people and bring healing everywhere you go if you set that intention. It's a perfect balance of the two energies. You know, it's interesting. So when we talk about healing, what, and we look at the calendar, what does that tell us from the book? Well, it tells us two things from the book. When you look at the calendar, it tells you how to work with the day energy in the day, how to approach the day, what you should do and how you should 
schedule your life. You can look at this calendar and, and see how to schedule your life. But the book goes more deeply into the energies on a personal level as well as looking at the day energy by describing the two energies, the universal and the energy, that are your personal combination. What makes you you? You have a universal energy that is part of who you are and how you react and respond in the world, and you have an earth energy that's how you are and how you respond in the world. So if you know what your own personal energy is, then you can look for how you personally go into the high road or the low road in every choice that you make. And the calendar helps you use an understanding of what the day energies are and the people around you so that you can have more harmonious relationships as well. The book and the calendar are not just about the day energies, as Pia just explained. The the energy of everything contributes to every relationship. All relationships. All relationships. Um, we could speak of love relationships. We could speak of work relationships. We could speak of familiar relationships. We could speak of any number of relationships. The, the calendar and the book have to do with energy as the guiding force or the guiding understanding of how everything works together or does not work together. And one of the other things that we love about this third book in the trilogy is that LARCMA actually is dancing with science. They're talking about quantum physics. They're talking about DNA. They're talking about biology of species evolution. They're talking about levels of consciousness and how our consciousness moves in a spiral, just like every galaxy, every everything in our solar system is based on a spiral. And they're talking about how when we align with that energy, our consciousness leads us more towards becoming cosmic citizens. They are eager for humanity to evolve so that they can engage with us more in direct communication, all of us. We've been, we've been working on the design and the content of this work, the, the calendar and the book, for over a decade. We have been refining, redesigning, and coming to a much greater understanding of how important the element of energy is. Which brings me to something your listeners may find very interesting. When Cullen says we've been working on these energies together, the book offers an understanding and explanation of shadow cycles. What is a shadow cycle? Most people would call them a series of bad hair days where nothing's going right. But actually, a shadow cycle is a rare opportunity for you to be able to regroup, figure out what your emotions are trying to tell you, where the old patterns are that need to be broken, where the belief systems are that need to be looked at. All of those things come to the forefront or up to the surface during a shadow cycle. And each person has a shadow cycle that happens to them personally once every 60 days. The collective of humanity has a collective shadow cycle that happens one every 260 days. And if you look back historically at the collective shadow cycles, you're going to see periods of war, periods of attack, periods of all kinds of things that happen during collective shadow cycles because we as a species have not learned how to look at what's going wrong and change the pattern of reaction. Cullen and I, what I was going to say, I'll, I'll take a breath in a minute, what I was going to say is Cullen and I started looking at our own shadow cycles and understanding how in our relationship and individually how the shadow cycles gave us opportunities to really break through some old stuff. Well, what, I totally agree with that. And what I was going to say is in our research, we have used this system retroactively, I guess, to prove to ourselves that that when when we think we've hit upon something that's accurate, if we retroactively check it out by date or, as Pia said, by occasion, whether it's whether it's a war or a famine or uh, a revolution or I- any manner of of instances that happen to us in in our physical world, we can see that we can pinpoint with almost absolute accuracy these things happening because of the shadow element, either personally or globally or universally. It's amazing. So the book and the calendar give people an opportunity to plan their lives a little better without so much unexpected change. They can say, okay, this looks like it's going to be a challenging period here. 
Let me see if I can incorporate more compassion. Let me see if I can listen a little better to my partner. Let me see if I can not be so reactive emotionally, giving them an actual chance to work with old patterns and eliminate them, and it really enhances the relationship. Mm. Well, and that's really kind of where we want to be, where we're in, you know, eventually getting over whatever limiting beliefs we we have and and moving beyond that. Is there a point that individually that we will get to a point where we don't really have that shadow cycle, or is that always going to be with us? I think the shadow cycles are always there, but there is a point where they become less painful. I can say personally for me, I hardly ever notice mine anymore. I will feel myself become out of balance, and then I will say, oh, must be a shadow cycle, and I'll go look, and I'll pull myself back in and regroup. And the shadow cycles are not nearly as painful as they were for me eight or ten years ago. I think, I think once a balance is struck with, with understanding all of our inner workings better than we have in the past, let's say, I think the the cycles will still be there, but they won't be a challenge. I think they will become an opportunity to tell us that, yes, we have actually evolved to the point where we have no more no more bad hair days. Or we're able to handle the bad hair days a little easier. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fabulous? I get it because, you know, a few weeks back, I mean, it was having, it felt like a bad hair month, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when we go through these things, I mean, everyone has them. I mean, it's part of the human experience, you know, but it's, I love how we talk and you guys talk about how we look for those things that are holding us back. It's really a time of awareness. It is. It is. And speaking of a time of awareness, we have a great opportunity coming up on Saturday, January 19th. We'll enter into a new 13th cycle of 13 universal energies on Saturday the 19th, and the energy happens to be enlightening energy, which for the highest vibration is committing to ideals and opportunities for social progress, and boy, do we need that. So we will have a 13-day period that even though though each day has a different energy, they're all overlighted by this possibility of social progress and enlightening ourselves and our world around us. It's a really exciting time coming in. And that that to, to us is interesting because this is happening in the very beginning of this new year. Hmm. Well, I mean, and, and when we talk about this calendar, my goodness, I mean, it feels like with the old calendar, it's right up there with the world being flat. I mean, it's about time we have <laughs> you know, an upgrade. Well, well said, Marianne. <laughs> Thank you, Marianne. That's how we perceive it. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, it's you look at these things, and as a society, we progress, but when we're using something from, like, you know, that, that, that just is so archaic, I mean, it doesn't even make sense. You know, it, it'd be like having a surgeon go into surgery and, and you know, he's he's using a hammer and nothing sterilized. I mean, it, just, it doesn't even make sense, you know. So well, that's, having that, yeah. That, that's really interesting that you bring that up because LARCMA often tells groups when, when we're speaking in, in public gatherings, they often say, we know that you humans believe that your medicine and your technology is so cutting edge. And they just laugh. They laugh. They, they laugh very gently and very lovingly and say, we're sorry to have to tell you this, but your medicine and your technology are quite archaic compared to what you will be experiencing as you develop more fully. And from an interstellar group that travels in light ships, I think that's really a comparison that we might want to consider when we brag about how technologically advanced we are. So what you just said about about the, archa- the archaicness of our of our old calendrical system and how maybe how banging together our medical system is, um, you're absolutely on target and absolutely right about that. Well, it, it, it just, I find it fascinating because, you know, when you, when you look at this, you look at the calendar, I mean, it's right on target and you're, you, you spend time reading Palladian Earth Energy Astrology, you know, charting the spirals of consciousness. It brings it all together so people can really make sense of really how our world should be because it's, 
you know, I, I know in, in some of your other books you do talk about how, you know, like technology really pulls us away from nature, and I feel the old calendar does that as well. It does, absolutely. We completely agree with you about that. Well, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. So, well, you've got this, I mean, we've got the 19th coming up with some interesting things happening. Where can people go if they want to learn more about LARCMA? And I know that you guys have an event coming up on February 3rd, too. We do. Yes, we do. We are in the spirit of collaboration, which LARCMA says we should focus on that theme this year. We are collaborating with a very dear friend who is, in our opinion, the most respected channel that we know, who brings in a powerful force of healing energy called channeling love. And that particular conversation is going to be a first-time dialogue between channeling love, her collective, and LARCMA, who will be talking about all kinds of things. We don't know what they're going to bring up. But they'll, they'll be talking together. So we're quite excited about this. This, this will be the first public dialogue um, of this nature. We, we have shared our two sets of energies before privately. privately. And we decided, and thank you for bringing this up, Marianne. We just concluded this idea. We just invented and concluded this <laughs> idea, I think, two days. Two days ago, this is a brand new collaboration that, that we're so very interested in beginning, and we hope that it may become a series throughout 2019. So we're excited about it. And yes, people, if they sign up for our email list, which is available on larkma.com, and that's spelled L-A-A-R-K-M-A-A.com, if you sign up on the email list there, you'll be sent an invitation and instructions of how to, how to join and participate. And, you know, how important is that? I, I personally feel, I mean, I've enjoyed every single book that you guys have uh, written with LARCMA, the work that you've done. The calendar I've found to be a huge resource, and it's the only calendar I'm using for myself personally in regards to my own healing and stuff like that. Oh, and before we go, I mean, gosh, we did this amazing session. I mean, most people probably are not going to interview LARCMA like I did. They probably want to spend time with LARCMA and maybe ask different questions. Where could they go to do that? There's a section on our website that they can do that. In fact, everything is available on the website, LARCMA.com. You can have, you can schedule a personal synchronization, which is what LARCMA calls their personal sessions because they synchronize their energy with the other person. Or you can schedule, a, if you'd like to go more deeply into your own energy, you can schedule a Pleiadian Earth Energy personal astrology chart. You can find out about events like our February 3rd collaborative event. And we send out a, a weekly newsletter that has a message, a recorded message from LARTMA to guide people through the week. We do that every Sunday. We also, well, we also have a, a monthly international live call that LARTMA speaks for a portion of, of, of that, usually about an hour, and then a, a approximately half of that hour is opened up to questions and answers. And that's quite popular worldwide. Mm. I, I hear that it is. I know a lot of people participate in, in doing that. I really enjoy the personal um, synchronization session. I'm going to be doing that again. I thought that was fabulous, but next time I'm doing it for me, I'm not going to interview them. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can just do it a little different because I could feel their, I mean, they have this healing quality, this loving quality that you can feel. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, you know, in the world, you can, you can connect and do that. And I found it to be, you know, just really transformative. So, um, well, do you know, Pia and Colin, my goodness, it's always such a pleasure to spend time with you both. You know, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. We enjoy being with you and your listeners, and we will be with you again, we hope, sometime in the future. Thank you for this opportunity. It's always a delight and a pleasure. It's been, it's been uplifting um, for us to spend this time with you, so thank you very much. 
Well, thank you both so much. My goodness, this has been such an inspirational time. I felt it to be completely transformative, and I know our listeners do as well. Again, if you'd like to connect with Pia Cullen and Larkma, you can at their website, larkma.com, and we'll have the link below. You can also find Pia and Cullen's books. They're available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all indie bookstores. And of course, don't forget to order the calendar. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You're listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Mary Ann airs every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmaryann.com for more information.